Did you click it? Yes. Oh, did it say you're live? I think we're live, Gabe. Oh, okay, welcome. Good Monday morning. It is 9, 9.03, May 30th, uh, Monday, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, this You are currently watching Drawing for Tattooers with James Wisdom, and this is the Reinventing the Tattoo Network. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it to make sure that these streams are going out. It gives you time to let us know in the comment section that it's working or tag some friends or, I don't know, do those stories and the TikToks to let everybody that knows about uh, tattooing knows that what's going on. James is going to go through exercises. This is the second or third episode. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, okay. So let's uh, start off. Sorry, it's Monday morning here. Let me get to my script. Welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community, where tattoo artists, uh, collectors, apprentices, and the curious are all encouraged to join in these live streams to uh, share with each other, inspire each other, ultimately to create better art and tattoos together. Uh, the Reinventing Network goes out on a, on a wide variety of places. You can do a search for Reinventing the Tattoo in the Apple App Store, in the Google Play Store, and also on YouTube is a, a channel about a year and a half old and that you might be watching it live there. Uh, again, that's uh, the Reinventing the Tattoo, uh, also in the Roku channel, right? So do a search and please leave the positive reviews and and shares and stuff because all those channels are new and those are what those those review algorithms like right um oh shit here's the time where i'm supposed to share the reinventing the tattoo website so no matter where you might be watching from if you go to reinventing r-e-i-n-v-e-n-t reinventing the tattoo.com it will always have the latest and greatest um, information about reinventing and what's going on? The host has disabled participant screen sharing. Well, it looks like I can't share the screen. You want to uh, you click that over, James, or should we uh, just run with it? I clicked it. Yeah, fantastic. That was easy. Do it. Um, perfect. So far, right. reinventing the tattoo. Okay, so here we go. Reinventing the tattoo.com. You notice up here we've got the free resources. These free tattoo courses are not how to tattoo for free, of course. Uh, but they are awesome. They're full of uh, history. This is the electric history of tattoo, or the history of electric tattooing. This is amazing. Uh, Jay, uh, Jay Brown from the Northwest Tattoo Museum has been adding all sorts of amazing um, history lessons in here. So if, well, if you're an apprentice or, or, or you just don't know your history, that's a, it's a fantastic resource. Um, as well as what are your goals? So if you uh, fill out the goals questionnaire, then Guy sends a uh, uh, some emails every couple of days. I'll send an email uh, addressing how to uh, work on those goals. Some of them are for pay and some of them are for free. You've got the podcast links, the community links, upcoming events, and also uh, watch Reinventing 24-7. This is uh, also what goes out on the Roku. It is basically um, the different channels. I don't know why this is uh, not playing at the moment. It's funny. It's probably just loading up here. Oh, there we go. So this is an old uh, or a replay of a, a drawing group with Jake Meeks. Actually, this is one of the old Monday uh, groups. Um, we've got Art Jam. So there's a whole channel here full of Art Jams, the Tattoo Collecting Podcast. We have a Spanish, a, a Spanish channel. So if you speak Spanish or know somebody who speaks Spanish, um, this is a whole channel devoted to Spanish speaking uh, tattoo demos. The Tattoo Weekly is a show that happens at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern. So that's happening uh, right after this. Um, Live in the Castro, you know, the um, like all the shows, the Tattoo Machine show. There is a Tattoo Convention Channel, uh, a marketplace for our sponsors. Uh, uh, raw Pigments, we'll talk a little about them a little bit later, but you could uh, check out some of the artists that are using Raw Pigments and uh, True Tubes, Open House and Tour. And, you know, it's basically a, oh, here's the Tattoo History Channel, Bridging the Gap with Good Time Charlie. It really is kind of uh, just out of control here. Uh, all of the cool stuff. Lastly, Drunk Critique. Against our better judgment, we have a full channel devoted to Drunk Critique. So that is what you could find on reinventingthetattoo.com. Okay, let's see. What am I doing for time here? It looks like we're just about to get started. Is this working, James? Can you see if this is uh, working in any of the, the YouTubes or something? Or I don't even know. Well, uh, I, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll check it after the, I'll, I'll double check after here. Um, 
Okay, so weekly staple shows, some of the upcoming shows that we have regularly on the Reinventing Network. 1 p.m. is on Sundays. These are all Eastern Standard Time. Um, 1 p.m. Eastern, Reinventing Drawing Group with Jason Leeser. Artists of all skill levels are encouraged to beam in from all around the world to work on drawing homework, to have conversations. They're fun to listen to. They are also fun to beam into. Uh, Mondays at 9 a.m. is Drawing for Tattooers with James Wisdom. That's what we're watching now. I'm going to get out of the way pretty soon. Mondays at 11 o'clock is a.m. is the Tattoo Weekly with Jake Meeks from the Fireside Tattoo Network, Lauren Gregory from Raw and uh, Reinventing, and then me, I'm Kay Ripley from Tattoo Now and from Reinventing. We kind of cover the well, cover interesting topics. We do interviews. I think today we're interviewing Chino from the Ink Mania Tattoo Convention that's down in um, St. Pete's down in Florida. It's right near the Dolly Museum. Excited to do the, uh, the Dolly uh, tour there. Anyways, let's see. Mondays at 9 p.m. is the subscribers exclusive exercise with Guy Aitchison. So if you're not a, a, an active subscriber for the uh, Evolve or the Monday exercises, you definitely should. They are awesome. And you know, people get to beam in and get critiqued and draw with Guy. It's, it's out of control. Tuesdays at 10 a.m. is a, another uh, drawing group with Ricardo Stervenant, the uh, Feelings. Everyone, again, is encouraged to beam in 10 a.m. Tuesdays. Uh, Wednesdays at 1, from 1 to 2, is the Tattoo Now show. And uh, that's where I, instead of hopping away, uh, I stay in front of the camera and do some interviews and whatnot. We usually talk about how tattoos are uh, changing the world for the better in that kind of hippie way. Uh, Thursdays at 6 p.m. is the Tattoo Collecting Podcast. Uh, with uh, Fawn Baker, Jordan Rookus, and a whole uh, crew of characters. They've been doing it strong for well over a year now. It's like a good two hours uh, they're bringing in from Red Tree. A couple more ways to support uh, the Reinventing Network. RawPigments.co is one of our main sponsors, been around uh, with us since for the last year and a half since the start of this network. They are acrylic free. They don't dry out in the cup and seemingly everyone that's getting these samples, they, they really dig them, or at least um, many of the people that we're talking to. So if you're interested, uh, get a hold of them. Uh, you could probably buy a sample. Oh, actually we do have samples here now. I have them in my, in my garage now. So we're getting ready. If you're interested in some sample inks or sample cartridges, then sign up to our mailing list. Uh, go to the Reinventing the Tattoo and find some mailing lists to sign up to. Um, let's see, worldtattooevents.com, the most comprehensive website for tattoo events. Alex also has interviews, do a search for like the future of tattoo conventions in the history of tattoo conventions, world tattoo events, you'll, you'll catch up with him. And if you're going to a convention or interested in going to conventions or a tattooer, trying to figure out your schedule, uh, worldtattooevents.com. Two more, DLize Pro is known as Dermalize Worldwide. That's DLize Pro inside of the United States. And that we're trying to make sure everyone knows this due to international branding things. So do a search for either Dermalize or DLize Pro. If you're in the United States, find a supplier for DLize Pro, it's the healing wrap. It's breathable, so it's not like saran wrap that's designed not to breathe. Uh, you could, uh, yeah, there's, there's a tons of videos out there with artists talking about using it and about how to use it. Uh, so yeah, if you want to protect your art during the healing, uh, it's, it's perfect. I, I, I per prefer this method of healing for sure. Again, it's uh, designed to breathe uh, and heal wounds. Uh, Tattoo Now, I do technology for tattooers and consulting. And yeah, everything's going pretty good. I'm, I'm excited to be working with more Tattooers and ever, and I, I do site visits and I have a couple planned. I'd rather do a site visit than go to a convention these days. So if you're somewhere in the United States, uh, I think I've got to drive out to Texas at some point or Florida. I don't know, a couple ones going. So you can get a hold of me uh, through Tattoo Now or GabeRipley.com. And then last, but in this case, not least first, uh, Guy Aitchison, GuyAitchison.com. He is the founder of Reinventing the Tattoo. Uh, it started off as a three ring binder. And he would send out all the chapters for people to, um, to, to plug into the middle of the binders at, at the times, right? He was always into multimedia and updating things. Now, not only is there online courses and a weekly, uh, uh, a weekly drip in course so people can take it together and evolve. Actually, it's worth talking real quick. If you are an apprentice, a younger tattooer, or even a great tattooer who's going to dedicate about two hours, two to six hours a week of your time, the Reinventing the Tattoo Evolution course is starting up June 14th. Enrollment's going to start in a day or two. I think we're limiting it to 50 this time. Uh, it, it went really uh, gangbusters last time. Uh, now we're going to try to make sure that we limit it. So yeah, uh, go, if you go to reinventingthetattoo.com, courses, it's the Evolve. 
uh, the classes or the lessons launch every Tuesday. And then on Monday, there's a live lesson with Guy. So it's uh, it's awesome. And if you want to uh, up your, your game, it's like going to the art dojo and then going home with exercises. It's pretty amazing. Um, and you can also get the canon. So if you're uh, one of those tattooers that just wants the, all of the knowledge right away, you want to watch it at two in the morning on your own time, then you can just purchase the canon. And um, yeah, anyways, so that's reinventing the tattoo. Uh, the, please, again, uh, leave your positive reviews on the public channels, all of your constructive criticism, or if you want to sponsor any of these shows, management at reinventingthetattoo.com. Okay. I am going to hop in the background here. I think the only thing I forgot to talk about are our live events. Sorry, I am going to hop in here real quick. Our live events coming up June 10th to the 12th in Florida, Ink Mania, Ink Mania Expo.com. We'll have uh, uh, seminars and uh, reinventing stuff there, July 29th to the 31st. Uh, the Rubber City Tattoo Invitational in Akron, Ohio, uh, hosted by Tony Urbanic. And then uh, Hell City is, I think, the uh, Hell City, Arizona, is in August. Okay, now I'm going to hop in the background, make sure this is working. James, thanks again for waking up early on Monday mornings to uh, make this happen. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, how do we spotlight? You are spotlighted. You should be spotlighted. All right. Well, hopefully. Okay, well, I'll go with it. <laughs> Seems to be like you are up. For some reason here, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, me. Oh, well, oh, you're going out. I've got my camera off. Oh, yeah, can I you did, see when I do talk though, I show up here. Looks like. Oh, I see. Here. No, I actually I have a. Uh, you you were asking me about uh, whether it was going out on YouTube, so I checked, and sure enough, and so I have it right here. So yeah, it's working. Um. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks everyone for coming to Drawing for Tattooers. Um, I'm James. With me, as always, is Gabe, and uh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna like begin our journey of reinventing the tattoo right here um, with this fundamental course on drawing. I mean, it's really geared for tattooers, uh, but uh, I think um, anyone can draw. You can draw, even if you're not a tattooer. Uh, so don't let the name fool you. It's just a name. Um, and I think that's probably where I would start our class today, uh, a theme, theme of discernment. Um, how, do we, how do we know what's right? Or how do we know like what's valuable? um discernment that's how but but what if right what if based on your point of view let's say you're you're up here right it's an eyeball <laughs> right let's say you're up there hopefully you can see that and you're looking and you see what you know to be the truth, right? A circle, right? Okay. Let's say somebody else, the other, they're also looking. Right? And they see in front of them, their vision, the truth, right? A square. Uh, well, there's a problem here, right? There's a non correspondence to these shapes. A circle is not a square. And a square is not a circle. But this person, from this point of view, sees that shape. And that person, from that point of view, sees a different one. Well, what's the answer? How do we figure this out? Well, what if we were to synthesize these things? I'm trying to draw nice and bold so that way you can see. Well, 
hopefully you see a cylinder. Um, this would be uh, this would be discernment, I think. A way to think about discernment. You may absolutely see the truth. And you might be totally right from your point of view. And somebody else might also see the truth. And they might also make a discernment. Um, but it's not until we can really synthesize these these points of view that we we can come to a level of understanding, a level of discernment. So that's that's the theme of uh, of today's lecture, today's like exercises. We're trying to discern how it is that we make shapes, how it is that we make forms, and then also uh, how it is that we're going to um, learn how to improve. So I hope you like that one. I think that's, I think it's nice, especially if you agree, if you can agree to disagree with someone, right? This is a good, this is a good, I think, example of that, right? Um, Cause you probably don't have it hundred percent, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> you probably, you're probably missing uh, a piece or two of the puzzle. And so, um, so we do need to, we do need to like, converse with others and engage with them and listen to what they have to say. And then integrate that into what we know. Right? Um, through that process, through that movement, you might come to, again, that, that discernment of knowing, of, of understanding. Um, all right, like, what does this really have to do with uh, drawing and stuff? Um, well, I would say or argue that it has everything to do with drawing. The drawing is nothing but a process of discernment. You as the drawer will make discernments. There'll be visual ones, right? Uh, there will be other ones, uh, uh, symbolic ones. Um, these will equate to real ones. Uh, there's all sorts of things discernment wise that you're going to as the artist, as the drawer, gonna going to need to get into. So I, I think on that note, why don't we get into some, some drawing exercises, because I think that's really what you're here for in the first place. Uh, so I hope you got your, uh, hope you got your pencils and, uh, and your papers ready, um, because we're going to go ahead and do uh, 50 ellipses, right? So um, if you don't remember what an ellipse is, that's all right. Uh, I have a, I have an example right here. An ellipse is a circle seen in perspective. So if we look at the circle as a structure, we can see that it has, uh, it has symmetry. It's perfectly symmetrical. And so, um, your ellipse will also need to have symmetry as well for it to be effective as an ellipse. Um, just kind of keep that in mind and practice it. It might not be something you'll ever truly, you know, let's say master or ever truly accomplish. You'll come very close, I hope. You'll come, you'll be able to develop ways to, to make these forms that are really important uh, work for you, right? Rather than against you. You've probably seen it maybe you haven't been able to discern it, right? But you look at a drawing, you look at a tattoo, you look at an image or something, and it's like, something's not right. Check the ellipse, <laughs> check it out. Maybe the ellipse is out of perspective, it's out of whack. We're really sensitive to this on a, you know, an unconscious level, really. So um, uh, keep working on it, but let's, we'll practice, right? So, um, so I'll just count them off as we go. And again, I'm gonna try my best to, uh, you know, orient my ellipses in, in all different sorts of ways. So that way I can get really familiar with the mo the movement of it as, and also what they look like. Um, okay, so let's get started. One, two, 
Go around the track a couple times. Three. Ugh. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. And, uh, you know, we're getting about halfway there. And I just want to sort of reiterate that I believe, you know, this is an exercise, is a warm-up exercise. And so they don't have to be pretty or precious. Um, uh, but just doing them, I think, is, uh, you know, it's so beneficial. And it's a skill set that will be there for you, you know, it, it, when you need it. So, so believe, right? Just believe and, and keep, on, keep on practicing. All right, 25. Okay, so uh, I'll use a different pen so that way I can kind of see what I'm doing. Twenty six. Twenty seven. Twenty eight. Twenty nine. Thirty. Thirty one. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. <laughs> All right, now, uh, here's something I always, I always throw this at my students, so I'll throw it at you too take your drawing implement and uh, put it in your other hand, your non-dominant one. And let's do the last 10 with the other hand. Are you ready, gang? Let's go, okay. Uh, 41, 42, 43. Are you doing it? It's really hard. 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. 49 it's so hard to do and 50 oh my god uh shake it off right if you're uh if, uh if you were doing that along with me good job um uh good for you do this drill every day and uh you'll you'll be glad you'll be glad about it um yeah, it's like almost uh like abstract expressionism kind of <laughs> so that's fun. Uh, ah, okay. So ellipses. Fun, 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 fun. Love it. Um, right. Okay. So just a couple more exercises, and then and then on to the the meat. Right. The you know on to the main course. We're still in uh we're still in the salad part. Um, so, again, I want to try to sort of uh, reinforce the exercises and the um, 
the concepts that we covered in the previous episodes. So if, um, if you need review, please go back and, and watch the other uh, episodes of Drawing for Tattooers. Uh, it's um, absolutely going to be uh, available to you on YouTube for free. Go back and check it. Um, hopefully there's uh, hopefully there's stuff in there for you. There's content that you'll get. You'll be able to get something from. Um, and then hopefully uh, you'll watch it again and maybe you'll get something new every time. OK, uh, right. So I wanted to talk about uh, perpendicularity. Again, we were just drawing ellipses and stuff. And that requires symmetry. Um, so even though we were drawing this symmetrical object, it didn't, you know, we weren't drawing any structure within it. We we're still inferring that there was a, a perpendicular relationship within that symmetry. So um, let's keep on, uh, let's keep on that track and um, let's practice some of our, uh, our, uh, horizontal and vertical lines. We'll do that for, for 10 and then we'll we'll do a we'll do a little bit of that perpendicular stuff. We'll square it up. We'll see how that goes. Okay. So just a couple of these back and forth, right? Just to sort of loosen up. So horizontal. And you can go both ways. Uh, If you dare, of course. Oh. Right, so what, what would be the value of like covering this whole paper with this sort of thing? Um, practice, that'd be the value. You get a lot of practice out of it. So. All right, and I like it. Seems pretty good. All right, so next I wanna just sort of focus on the vertical lines. So remember, horizontal pertains to the horizon. So just a good way to remember it. These are two words they're related, vertical, horizontal. Uh, do you ever get words switched up in your heads? I know I do, and so, Whenever I run into something like that, where there's this, this binary opposition, right? Vertical or horizontal. I try to figure something out about it, one of them at least, and it helps me, you know, ascertain which one. Right and left, I have a hard time with that sometimes. <laughs> Maybe that's funny, um, but uh, I know that I, that I write, <laughs> I write with my right hand, so I kind of, I try not to second guess it, right? If I, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, that's left. It's um, if you struggle with that, then just know that I do too. And so, if that, you know, that makes it means anything. Um, so, but for this horizontal, you can remember horizontal is like the horizon. It's like the horizon of the earth. So if that helps you out, good, good, okay. So vertical, let's do it. Hold the paper just a bit. Uh. And why not do it with the other hand too? so bad all right <laughs> and one more time oh, oh it's like it's so weird i i don't know i've been doing it for years trying to become more ambidextrous um maybe not for tattooing purposes maybe i don't know but we'll see how it goes but certainly like uh you know when i'm when i'm using a shovel and i'm like shoveling a big pile of shit or something right or uh there's so many instances where you know you just probably favor one side of your body versus the other and you just don't even think about it right so you should get in touch with the you got two 
haves going on sort of thing you know that that you gotta you gotta you got you know if if right so i don't want to i don't want to be exclusive here right if you have the ability and the capacity to pick something up with your right hand and pick something up with your left hand i, I encourage you to engage with that privilege right it's a privilege to have all your body parts uh, or you know the vast majority of them right so if you got them you better use them but if you know if you don't make the best right we all want to make the best of what we've got so all right uh doing great on time so let's keep on keeping on uh you can of course do some diagonal sorts of uh exercises if you like uh we'll do some diagonal lines in just a minute but you know uh diagonal lines are any angle that are that are not this these these vertical and horizontal right if, it, if it's not defined this way um then it's then it's a diagonal and remember, we talked about how these lines are static and that the diagonal has much more movement, right? It has much more dynamic sort of quality to it. So keep that in mind for uh, all sorts of reasons. All right, let's, uh, let's look at some squares, right? So we wanna draw a square. I'm gonna try to be as accurate as I can. So vertical line and then intersect it with a horizontal one. See if you can't nail down that 45 degrees. Uh, no, that's not good. How about, that's better. <laughs> See, too far, that's much better, right? Well, we, what we're going for, right, what we, what we end up with, right, is a, a right angle here, right? And then we have here, these are 45 degree angles, which is, you know, half of 90. So, uh, what you end up with is the same uh, the same rise over run right talk about that a little bit but. Um, but this helps you develop your square, and I think uh, you know understanding this as a concept is good, and if you can start to internalize it when you start to draw there's no reason why you can't sort of see this shape with your eyes. You can take the training wheels off if you like, and then you you can sort of you're you're seeing this structure, but you almost are overlaying it with your imagination. You kind of don't have to draw it because you are so familiar with it. So, okay, um, so let's try that a couple of times. Let's do let's do a few squares. So, and you can go about this any any way that you like. As far as uh, start with the left, start with the right, start with the the lower, start with the upper, whatever. Um, let's see. Probably do another one. Alrighty. Very nice. Um, How's that look? Yeah, I kind of see them. Okay. Draw one more. Oof. And I, I really want to encourage you to, to learn to sketch that forty-five degree angle. I think it's a very, a really important one, and it's so, so easy for you to, you know, to, to use. It can be so effective, right? Can you draw this square like reasonably well? Um, you know, it's a practice, so very good. Okay, so um, I think the way that we can, uh, we've drawn these squares, they're looking square-like, pretty good. Um, well, we just squared up, let's circle up, right? Let's circle inside of there. So how do we do it? Um, remember the construction of a circle, it fits within a square, right? Circle fits within a square. In fact, the circle is going to touch the square at particular points, right? So if we bisect our square, right? We find the center of the square. We transfer that information to the planes, right? The sides of our, of our square. And we, uh, we can now uh, start to draw in uh, our circle, right? And the, 
this is going to also like tell you how accurate your square was. <laughs> how good is your circle is going to, you know, kind of indicate the quality of the square. So, you know, again, just a quick sketch, you know, and you can ascertain the position of those four points. Those are called the points of tangency. That's where the circle touches the square. And so um, I love language. I love words so much. I don't, I don't mean to overwhelm you with them. There's a word for it. It's called loquacious. <laughs> so, but there are lots of words. Uh, but don't worry, I, you know, like if you if I ever say a word that you don't know, you can always ask me about it. Um, or you can look it up because sometimes that's I mean, that's what my mom always told me. I'm like, what does that word mean, mom? She's like, look it up. <laughs> and you can do that pretty easy. I used to have to get the dictionary out and like thumb through it. And then well, you know, it wasn't in there. So probably on Google now, though. So check it out. Um, Again, just quickly sort of sketching in the position. For the circle, great. Boom, boom. Very nice. Um, fantastic. Got some circles. I can't help myself. Got to put some ellipses in there. So, um, one, a two, a three, and a four, five, one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and Five, one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah, fun. Um, so, uh, so that's I think um, these are really great exercises to do very quickly. Again, the fifty ellipses, man, like you could do that very quickly. And these ones too, you could do this very quickly and then work into, you know, like, like how, how good is my, how good is my free handed circle? Not very good, but, <laughs> but it's something to, you know, something to shoot for, something to work on. And again, you can always, like, if you're trying to look at your subject, in this case, our drawing, and you're trying to figure out like what's uh, where did I go wrong or where is the you know where is the imbalance at? Um, I always like the trick of a of a hand mirror. I think a hand mirror can help change your perspective on stuff. So you know, um, so look at your drawing. Something's not right. You can't tell. Take your mirror and then look at your drawing. And ah, I can see. Looks like it's a little bit. A little flat on this this part right here right so just a little bit more of a, a roundedness and that would help this could be like very valuable trick for you that's a that's like a magic trick because your eyes can only focus on one thing at a time and so if you're really busy focusing on this you can't see the mistake necessarily using a mirror changes your point of view right um gives you that second set of eyes almost like our first example with you know subject a seeing a circle subject b seeing a square and they both didn't quite have the whole story right it was it was the cylinder after all same thing with your drawing uh take a photograph of it reverse it use a mirror um have somebody else look at it stand up from your from your table and take a look at it from a bit of a distance all those are techniques that artists and drafts people use all the time to kind of help facilitate like a more uh, uh, more discernment. More discernment. Like I said that earlier. So, uh, all right, we're doing good. I think um, I think that we can I can go into like I said, I promised some main course a little bit of like a little bit of loop. 
So, so let's do that. All right. Everybody doing okay out there? Look, if you're out there, uh, light up the chat. Let's hear it. Where are you at? We're going to check it later. So um, let us know where you're from. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, even if after the show, right? Don't you love seeing that? Like some some old video and like it was like five, from five years ago and somebody just commented yesterday, right? It makes it fresh again. So do that, right? you know. Um, right? Okay, so, uh, right. There's the three topics that I'm um, gonna try to cover in the next few minutes and we'll see how it goes, right? So uh, this is the, these are the concerns of mass. Uh, what did I say? Yeah, volume. <laughs> volume. Right. And form. Okay. So, uh, in terms of mass and, and things that we want to sort of want to think about, um, uh, we've been talking a lot about like two dimensionality, two dimensional shapes and stuff. So um, we can think about like what we've been drawing, right? The square. Oh, the square enough, I hope. All right. So a square. And this is uh, this this is in in in. in Two dimensions, 2D. Well, um, we can start to think about uh, start to think about like what if, right? What if there was what if there was some more space back there, right? What if we could move from 2D to more of a three uh, dimensional? uh yeah three-dimensional um appearance uh, well we can and i think that's where we can really start to you know really start to think about the mass of objects right is when we start to consider not only um if you like uh the y-axis the the vertical one that's what we're talking about vertical right in math, it's called the y-axis, right? Uh, and then the, the the horizontal one, call that x, right? X-axis is the the horizontal one. Uh, well, what if there was a what if there's a third one, right? Right. The z-axis, right? Uh, this is what we're talking about, right? The third dimension. That's what all the buildup and all the fuss about all the sketching and stuff has been so far. Is you know, it's it's you know, it 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 serves its own purpose and it and it has its own aesthetic and beauty. But we're we're interested in developing representation. We're interested in developing the illusion of the third dimension on a two dimensional surface. Uh, I mean, we're talking about tattoos. It's kind of interesting. Your surface is a three-dimensional one. So how then do you create like effective three-dimensional images on a three-dimensional canvas? It's very advanced in, in that respect. So, you know, let's start with the basics. Really start, you know, you may know a lot, right? I, you know, maybe you may, you may know a lot more than I do. That's, that's, that's likely, but I think some of these things that we're talking about could help just about gosh darn everybody. So I hope you can have the humility to hear me out. Okay, um, volume, pump up the volume, right? What are we talking about? You know, like how much, how much is contained within these forms, right? How much is contained within, right? The volume of it. Is this a solid object, right? Or is it a, you know, is it a hollow one, right? Does it have a, 
Is it like, is it open or something like that, right? Or, um, or is there like a, is there like a way that I could see inside of this thing? You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, mass, two dimensional, three dimensional, volume, how much, um, and forms, right? Again, I think, I think the thing that I really want to sort of, uh, to get at and really talk about, because we're going to do one more drawing exercise, right, is, uh, is this idea of symmetry. And of course, we're talking about all these axes, right, axis, axis. Well, um, if there's one axis that I think is really, really important for almost any kind of, you know, exploration into drawing, and that's the central axis, right? So God, I'm like out of room here. See if I can give it a try. The central axis, I'll use this red pen. Right, a vertical line to sort of represent my central axis. Right, and then I'm gonna sketch in. Elliptical form, hopefully it's about as balanced as I can make it. Right, and it's very nice. We'll talk about how to position, you know, the central axis um, more accurately or give you more tools with it as, as we commence. But, but really, you know, um, being able to have a center of, of uh, uh, you know, of your form that you can then sort of like measure out um, can be super duper valuable for you. Right, you can start to create this illusion of depth. I mean, right away, I think, without much value, I've added a little bit of tonal value here sort of give us this this sort of thing a couple of tones yeah that's like a paper bag with a hole in it kind of this may be like a lemon or an orange or a grapefruit or something i don't know um but i think what makes it possible is this central axis right this centered line that allows me to understand how the geometry is related to itself how it becomes one thing a form. Okay, so uh, so last little bit here. Again, another exercise, and I think this is one uh, that you'll find really useful. I, I hope this is one that you'll actually you'll actually use right away. So we're gonna draw some cylinders. We have all the tools right to do this because we've we've been practicing all morning and we and we did all the. You know, we did all the theory and we did all the exercises. And so uh, so now the concept that we're going to utilize is this idea of symmetry and this idea of the central axis. Right. So so just draw you can draw a line and orient it any way you like. But I'm going to I'm going to go with a vertical first. OK, just a, just a vertical line. I'll use my red pen to sort of give myself some structure and then my blue one to make it more solid for you. Okay, so I want a, I want a perpendicular intersection, right? The lower, and then another perpendicular intersection here at the upper. And so kind of like a, you know, it's not like an I because it has these extra, it's like an H, I guess, on its side or something. I mean, whatever, it's, just, it, there it is, that thing, an axle. Yeah, axle, that, that's, that's what it is, an axle, okay. Uh, so what do we want to do next? What we want to do next is we want to discern the symmetry, right? Make sure that, that it's symmetrical. How do we do that? We measure. We can measure. Uh, again, um, we can we can go back and we can use some of the tools that we've had before in terms of the, you know, we can do the 45 degree angle. But sometimes I'll just use my, my pencil or my pen and I, I'll just hold it up. You know what I mean? I'll just sort of make sure like, ah, okay, there's there's that. And then... I can move it over as ah, that's 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 that. And then the same thing up here, I can sort of mark it and make sure to mark it. Uh, yeah. 
try to be accurate as possible. Okay, good. Just sketch it in. Very nice. Okay, and then the same thing for uh, for these. What you want to do is they have you have to have a. This has to be a, a, a perpendicular bisector. What that means is that they intersect each other at like a center point. At you know they're at the equal distance. So again, just a bit of measurement. And if you we're gonna make this one uh, um, uh, isometric to sort of perspective, but we'll get into more of the linear perspective stuff later on. Um, but yeah, let's do it. I've got everything marked out. Just to show you the marks, there's a central axis. It intersects with um, uh, with its bisectors, right? This gives us what? A short axis and a long axis, right? And that's going to allow us to draw our cylinders, right? Cylinder. All right, so then just give it a contour. That's the outline that describes the perimeter of this form. I'm just kind of calling it a form right now because it doesn't really have much objecthood to speak of. Um, I mean, as soon as you call it a trash can or something, then now it's an object. Uh, as a concept, it's a it's like this form. It's 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 not that different. Um, but philosophically speaking, there's a there's a bit of a distinction. So I don't want to lead you astray, but um, uh, you know, I don't they're they're not exactly interchangeable. Per, you know, exactly, but as soon as it's when it's basic like this, I like to think of it as like a form. When it becomes more involved and it has like some identity as something, then I think of it as more of an object. Uh, but we've got time for one more, and then uh, so right. So I've got this this way. Well, all right, let's tip it over. So diagonal, and then again, I want to do a try my best. This for me is very challenging to to match up, make a perpendicular angle okay all right and parallel right and then again you just want that you want that you want that symmetry all right and then again uh i'll try to make this one more perspective right so there's that and then uh, uh, uh. right so Does it look? Ah. Well, it's not going to win any any prizes at the cylinder convention, but you know, my goodness, if you were sketching this up, you were just sort of having a you know fun sketch that you were working on, you know, it would just it just makes you feel better, you know, when you when you're able to sort of obtain some accuracy um, in your forms and stuff, so. All right. Well, that's, uh, I think that's going to do it for today's class. Um, I really want to thank you for coming. Um, again, uh, please support Reinventing the Tattoo. It's an amazing organization um, headed up by legendary Guy Atchison. Uh, again, um, the reinventing the tattoo uh, course is uh, uh, is a trimester based curriculum and it is uh, it is opening in uh, in June, I believe. So make sure to sign up for it. Um, you're you won't regret it. Uh, again, I want to thank you for coming. I hope you had fun and I hope you were able to draw along. Hope I didn't go too fast or too slow. Uh, if you really enjoyed the content that you saw here, make sure to like and subscribe. And also make sure to check out all the other amazing content that is available for free at Reinventing the Tattoo. Um, we're a community of tattooers and artists, and, and we're always trying to support each other and also see, you know, not only the, uh, the tattooing industry, you know, 
uh, flourish, but also make tattoos and tattooing uh, a force for, for good in the world. So I hope you've enjoyed drawing for tattooers. Um, I think that's I think that's it. I don't know if Gabe's Gabe, are you there? Is Gabe there? Maybe not. If Gabe is in the house, uh, we will see you. Uh, we'll see you soon. But um, for everybody else, we're going to see you next week uh, right here on Drawing for the Tattooers. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs>